The Marvel Cinematic Universe has become an entertainment behemoth that effortlessly weaves science and magic together into one non-stop parade of fun. If there's one thing that's been at the center of the otherworldly wonder since day one, though, it has to be Tony Stark's tech. Technically grounded in science, Stark has consistently pumped out a variety of sci-fi-esque technologies that constantly push far beyond real-world boundaries. Wendy's has been around since Dave Thomas founded the restaurant in Ohio in 1969, and in that time we've seen some amazing options when it comes to fast food fare. From powering Stark Tower with an arc reactor to covering the new Avengers facility with a menagerie of automated bells and whistles, Stark is always dazzling audiences with ridiculously expensive, flashy pieces of tech. Of course, Stark's signature scientific accomplishment isn't a building or a concept, it's his Iron Man armor, which makes some fairly dramatic changes over the course of the Infinity Saga. It begins with the clunky, hastily cobbled together Mark I and ends with the extravagant, nanotech-powered Mark 85 just 15 years later. From the beloved Frosty and the fresh never-frozen square burgers that have been on the menu since day one, to chili and baked potatoes that'll warm you up on a cold day, there's tons to love about the Wendy's menu. But times change and not every item on the menu is able to stand the test of time. There have even been some customer favorites that have hit the chopping block in recent years. Sometimes menu items are retired for a time only to return in a moment of glory for a limited time offer. Unfortunately, though, most items that go the way of the dodo stay that way. Throughout that decade and a half, Stark is hardly the only person to wear his ever-evolving super equipment. These are just some of the beloved Wendy's menu items you'll sadly never get to eat again. We've gone through the entire Infinity Saga in order to track down each and every time someone put on a piece of Stark's armor, and it turns that there's actually quite a laundry list of heroes, and a few villains, to boot, who don the red and gold at one point or another. Here they are, starting with those who actually wore Stark's personal suit and then moving on to others who wore any Stark-created iteration of the Iron Man tech. Tony Stark is the genius behind the Iron Man armor of course, a list like this has to begin with the man himself. Probably. The super bar today you may think of Wendy's as just another drive through fast food restaurant, but there was a period in the 80s and 90s when it certainly made more sense to go inside and stay a while. Tony Stark is the mastermind behind the Iron Man armor, and in many ways, he's the driving force behind the MCU itself. Tony has personally developed every one of his suits and has obviously worn them often. In fact, he's so connected to his iron outerwear that one of his key developments as a hero is specifically disassociating his identity from his suits, a fact that's clearly apparent when he tells Peter Parker in Spider-Man, Homecoming that, if you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it. Nevertheless, Stark's suits end up being a premier piece of the Avengers' arsenal. They outshine the copied tech of Obadiah Stane and Ivan Vanko, and they ultimately prove strong enough to house and channel the power of all six Infinity Stones. From start to finish, Tony's armor is by his side, or more accurately, on his side, helping him cut wires left and right and, eventually, even lay down on one. Aldrich Killian's explosive encounter with the Iron Man armor interestingly, one of the few people who've also worn Tony's personal armor is Aldrich Killian. That's because it was during that same period that Wendy's had their super bar, which believe it or not was an all-you-can-eat buffet. It offered far more than the typical Wendy's fare of burgers and fries, too. One commercial from the 80s shows tacos and pasta alongside your typical cold bar offerings like salad and fruit. Plus, after 4 p.m., you could come in for an all-you-can-eat dinner at the super bar for just $2.99 and the kids' super bar included a drink and a prize. At one point, it even included pizza. The main Iron Man 3 villain and inventor of Extremis, Killian's fiery frame dons the Iron Man armor at the very end of the third film in Tony Stark's titular trilogy. As Killian's Extremis soldiers take on Stark's Iron Army by the docks, the battle eventually winds its way down to a duel between the protagonist and the hero, which, doesn't it always? With Killian's combustible corpse proving to be more than a match for Stark's armor in a fair fight, the Starkster pulls a quick one by sending his detachable armor to pin Killian down. With just seconds to spare before the villain melts his way through the suit, Stark politely asks J-A-R-V-I-S. And let's not forget the chocolate and vanilla pudding as a dessert offering. Even without the beloved Frosty, that's a pretty sweet deal. To, do me a favor and blow Mark 42. 
Of course, the explosion doesn't officially finish off the villain. Pepper Potts does a few moments later, in kick-ass fashion, we might add. Too bad it didn't last. Still, the quick event does mean Killian makes the shortlist of MCU individuals who actually wear Stark's personal armor, however briefly. Doctor Strange donned Tony's suit. Let's all have a moment of silence for the fallen super bar. Chicken Caesar Pita Wendy's is nothing if not tuned into popular trends. Sort of what's that, you say? Stephen Strange once wore Iron Man's armor. Well, kinda. See, in Avengers, Infinity War, the pair of New York City-based heroes meet up for the first time, only to find themselves hurtling through space mere moments later on Ebony Maw's flying donut bound for Titan. With Spidey in tow, Stark eventually manages to defeat the child of Thanos, freeing Strange from the villain's tortuous needles in the process. The trio then goes on to join up with the Guardians of the Galaxy and confront Thanos on his home planet later on in the film. So where does Strange slipping into the Iron Man armor come into all of this? Well, it doesn't. Not in the final product. So when the all-you-can-eat buffet trend started to fade only to be replaced by the rap craze of the late 90s, Wendy's stepped up to the plate. Not to be confused with the lettuce rap craze of the early 2000s, the 90s rap craze was all about tortillas and pitas, the latter of which Wendy's used as the vehicle for their wraps. Enter the Wendy's fresh stuffed pitas, which were marketed as something different for the bored lunch crowd. However, Concept art for the movie that was released later on revealed the rather shocking image of Iron Strange, i.e. the most popular of these, the Chicken Caesar Pita, is luckily pretty easy to make on your own and there are plenty of copycat recipes out there. The Sorcerer Supreme in Tony Stark's armor. Plus, Wendy's still serves a Caesar side salad, so if you're feeling lazy, you can always toss that into a pita with some chicken, right? Still, it's just not quite the same. Unfortunately, despite years of urging from fans, it doesn't look like the chicken Caesar pita is returning anytime soon. The old French fry some things just shouldn't be messed with and Wendy's fries are among them. The description indicates that the idea was for Stark to send his armor to protect Strange from the Ma's torture device, freeing him up to fight the villain in a less painful manner. We're not even talking about a single piece of concept art here, either. They actually filmed the scene, it just never got into the movie. Maybe the logistics of getting the suit onto Strange without further pushing in the needles in the process just didn't work out. Either way, since it was officially filmed, we're going to count Strange as one of two MCU heroes who officially wore Stark's personal armor throughout the course of the Infinity Saga. Pepper Potts wears more than one suit the villain Aldrich Killian wears Tony's armor for a brief stint in the third Iron Man film and the hero Stephen Strange in officially dons the suit in a deleted scene for Infinity War, but the only hero who actually wears Tony's personal armor on the silver screen is Pepper Potts. Unfortunately, Wendy's didn't get that memo. Tony sends his Mark 42 armor to protect his significant other when his seaside mansion is unexpectedly attacked by armored helicopters in Iron Man 3. The destructive scene is only dwarfed in explosiveness by the attack on the Avengers HQ in Avengers, Endgame. The first change to the chain's fries came all the way back in 1990 when they, along with their main competitors, made the switch from using a combination of beef tallow and vegetable oil to pure vegetable oil for frying. If you know anything about the food crazes of the 90s, you can probably guess that this was the result of the fat-free and low-fat movement. But that wasn't the end of things for Wendy's. Just as customers were getting used to the new fries, Wendy's debuted their, natural cut fries, in 2010. Once in the armor, Potts tries to shield Stark and then quickly gets Maya Hansen, Rebecca Hall, out of harm's way, all before Tony signals his armor to come flying back to him so he can face the chopper's head on. Of course, that isn't the only time Pepper wears Stark's tech. She's one of the very few who actually get their own personalized suit, as well. In Endgame, we see Potts show up to the climactic final battle in the rescue armor, which she proceeds to wield like a pro. These fries have the skin on and are sprinkled with sea salt, and they're a direct attempt to capitalize on the real food movement. This makes Potts one of only two people on this list to both wear Stark's personal armor and her own suit, a right that she earns in spades after years of dealing with Tony's eccentric personality behind closed doors. Whether he's War Machine or Iron Patriot, Rhodey is always awesome. Next up, we have Stark's best bud, James Rhodey Rhodes. 
Rhodey has been by the Starkster's side since Iron Man, albeit with a quick actor swap along the way, and he's had a chance to spend more time in Iron Man armor than practically anyone else besides Stark himself. Initially billed as the Iron Patriot, Rhodey eventually settles down into his superhero persona as War Machine, donning Stark's tech time and again as he faces threats like Aldrich Killian, Whiplash, Thanos, and even other Avengers. Now, at first glance, it seems like Rhodey should be counted as someone who's only worn spin-off variations of Stark's personal armor, since he's generally seen wearing a beefy Iron Man suit that was specifically developed for his own use. Just take the tagline, you've had fries. However, die-hard fans will quickly recall that Rhodey's original run-in with Stark's tech isn't in his own suit at all but rather the Mark II. Now try some real fries. Some people love them, some people don't, but the real question is, can they still be dipped in a frosty? Yes. Then we're good here. Frescata sandwiches back in the early to mid-2000s, deli-style sandwiches were all the rage. Desperate to calm his drunk friend down, Rhodey's first use of the Iron Man armor comes when he steals the Mark II suit to beat down his best friend at Tony's birthday party. Subway, Blimpy, and Quiznos were leading the pack as consumers tried to eat healthier. Of course, not long after that, he's given his own suit, and the rest is history. Eric Savin wears Iron Man armor for one quick scene The least important person to ever don Iron Man armor has to be Eric Savin. So in 2006, Wendy's once again embraced a food fad and introduced their own version of deli-style artisan sandwiches called frescatas. According to a press release at the time of their debut, the deli sandwich category, which continues to expand, represents a growth opportunity and another way for us to meet our customers' needs. The bread was freshly baked, the deli meats were marketed as high quality and they took a long time to make, at least compared to Wendy's burgers. It was this long preparation time that allegedly led to the demise of the frescata. Despite attempts to keep the excitement alive by adding new varieties, in 2007, just a year later the frescata sandwiches were phased out and removed from the Wendy's menu. Coffee Toffee Twisted Frosty the Frosty. The Aldrich Killian henchman plays a fairly important role throughout Iron Man 3, but realistically, he's little more than a plot device, a plot device that wears Iron Man armor. Savin suits up in the Iron Patriot armor after it's literally cooked off of Rhodey's body by Killian's red-hot hands. Disguised as Rhodes, Savin then joins President Matthew Ellis at the last minute as he boards Air Force One. Once on board, Savin sabotages the flight, using a combination of the armor and his own extremist abilities to easily overpower everyone on board. You know it, you love it. Once he's captured the president, he takes off the armor and swaps into a much less impressive airline uniform to complete his mission. But do you remember when Wendy's branched out from their basic chocolate and vanilla frosty by adding other flavors? The year was 2009 and the Frosty was lagging behind the Dairy Queen Blizzard and the McDonald's McFlurry when it came to frozen dessert recognition. So what better way to grab people's attention than to add other flavors to the Frosty mix? There were several different flavors to choose from, but one truly stood out among the rest, the Coffee Toffee Twisted Frosty. It's obvious Wendy's really thought this one would last judging by the relatively high production commercials that also capitalized on everyone's love of boy bands. Just like your favorite boy bands, though, it just didn't last and was retired two years later in the summer of 2011. Despite petitions to bring it back to menus, you'll just have to add coffee and toffee to your frosty yourself. Pretzel bacon cheeseburger Let's face it, there are only so many ways to make a hamburger stand out in a sea of hamburgers. Interestingly, although he's little more than an MCU footnote, the entire sequence does let us see Savin actively using Stark's equipment in active combat more than any other villain on the list. Even the President of the United States gets to wear some armor the name Matthew Ellis likely doesn't jog the memory of many casual MCU fans, and no wonder. In 2013, Wendy's decided to take a chance and change up the bun itself. Pretzel buns were a hit both at Wendy's locations and on social media, with the restaurant soliciting pretzel love songs, a marketing tactic they also used in their commercials. And while people did indeed seem to love the pretzel bun in general, it was as part of the pretzel bacon cheeseburger that it really found its niche. The burger was briefly discontinued, but Wendy's brought it back in summer 2014, ultimately going so far as to add it to their permanent menu. The fella has very little impact on the greater cinematic universe during his lone outing in Iron Man 3 with the one glaring exception that, well, he's the President of the United States of America. When you're the POTUS, you're going to be the center of attention one way or another. 
which is precisely why, towards the end of the movie, we see a kidnapped President Ellis suspended over a container terminal, waiting to be executed on live television. Oh, and did we mention that he's wearing Iron Man armor? That's right. Then again, nothing lasts forever. The POTUS is one of the few MCU characters who get to wear Stark's tech, although if given a second chance, he likely wouldn't wish to repeat the ordeal. President Ellis finds himself thrust into the Iron Patriot armor when Eric Savin captures him on Air Force One. Wendy's once again discontinued the pretzel bun in 2015 with a spokesperson telling Brand Eating, the launch of the pretzel bacon cheeseburger in 2013 is still one of the most successful limited time offerings in Wendy's history. Who knows, maybe they'll bring it back again someday. All things queso cheese is nothing new at fast food restaurants, just look at the humble but delicious cheeseburger, but 2017 could easily be considered the year of cheese, specifically queso. From there, he's delivered right to the feet of Aldrich Killian, who puts him back in the suit in order to kill him in the very armor that the president thought would be used to protect him. Shortly after Chipotle debuted a, new and improved, but still disappointing queso dip and McDonald's added cheesy loaded fries to their menu, Wendy's added three new queso-drenched items to their menu, the bacon queso burger, the bacon queso chicken sandwich, and bacon queso fries. If that alone sounds amazing to you, consider the items were also topped with shredded cheese. Wendy's chief concept and marketing officer, Kurt Kane, said in a statement in 2017, Nobody does fresh beef, chicken sandwiches and topped fries like Wendy's, so we've taken three things our customers already love and made them even better by adding queso. Though they were always marketed as being available only for a limited time, that doesn't make it any less sad that they're gone. Gouda bacon cheeseburger It may not seem like much after talking about a burger that's covered in queso, but the bacon gouda burger at Wendy's combined people's love for cheese with their love for interesting burger buns and a whole lot of delicious toppings. Not only did the bacon gouda burger contain its namesake sliced gouda cheese, it also had a Swiss gruyere sauce, garlic aioli, bacon, red onions, tomato, and spring mix, all on a brioche bun. Did we mention it was a quarter pound of beef? Steeped in sports heavy marketing, the bacon gouda burger was always meant to be a limited time offering. Still, when its clock ran out, customers were devastated, begging for the item to be reinstated as a permanent menu fixture. Of course, Ellis isn't actually assassinated. Stark and Rhodey show up in time to orchestrate a daring rescue mission, and eventually, Rhodey saves the president, reclaims his suit, and spirits the unarmored world leader to safety. Peter Parker took on Thanos with the Iron Spider suit Peter Parker and Tony Stark share a special bond in the MCU. And honestly, with all the money Wendy's must have spent on the commercial with Terrell Owens and Vince Young, you'd think they would have kept it around longer. Spicy Chicken Nuggets In 1996, Wendy's debuted their original spicy chicken sandwich and it became a customer favorite, no small feat for a burger joint. With Uncle Ben absent by the time Parker's story begins, Stark steps into the mentor-father figure role and helps to groom the fledgling genius and instruct him in the superhero ways. All of this special attention from the Tony Stark naturally means Parker ends up getting access to quite a bit of Tony's tech. He gets his silky spidey suit early on, and he's gifted the EDITH sunglasses in Far From Home. Then, in 2010, Wendy's once again brought the heat with their spicy chicken nuggets. However, one of the best Stark gifts of them all has to be his Iron Spider suit. Parker first gets the gift when he hitches a ride with Doctor Strange and Ebony Maw onto the flying donut above the Big Apple. As the spaceship takes off and the air begins to get thin, Stark unlocks package, 17, oh, from the Avengers HQ. The shiny little bundle hurtles through the air and then opens up, catching the crime stopper from Queens just as he loses his grip and enveloping him in his new suit. Parker continues to sport the armor in Endgame, and while he leaves it behind on his field trip to Europe, we're hoping we'll continue to see this arachnid-inspired manifestation of the Iron Man armor for years to come. Bruce Banner took the Hulkbuster out for a spin Bruce Banner is a fairly timid fellow. They were delicious and they were inexpensive, so needless to say, they became the backbone of Wendy's for a lot of people. Then, in 2017, Wendy's attempted to quietly remove them from the national menu. But because nothing happens quietly in the era of Twitter, 
Fans rallied in their outrage, forcing Wendy's to formally announce the Spicy Nugget retirement and assuring upset customers that the decision hadn't been made lightly, and that the Spicy Nuggets would still be available at a few select locations. Still, Wendy's didn't listen to their pleading customers about reinstating the nuggets, so Burger King did, adding spicy chicken nuggets to their menu and offering customers named Wendy a free order. Sure, the knowledge that, if push comes to shove, he can't really get hurt, thanks to the other guy, is a bit of a confidence booster, but overall, he's far more brains than brawn. Hence, there's the need for Banner to hop into some Iron Man armor in Infinity War. Sadly, Wendy's spicy chicken nuggets are still missing from the national menu. Wild Mountain Chicken Sandwich Speaking of spicy chicken, no list of discontinued Wendy's items would be complete without the Wild Mountain Chicken Sandwich. Yes, there was a Wild Mountain Bacon Cheeseburger as well, but it didn't quite live up to the standards of the chicken sandwich. The Wild Mountain Chicken Sandwich took the original spicy chicken and turned it up a notch with a spicy southwestern sauce, Colby cheese, and bacon. If we've learned anything, it's that Wendy's customers don't like it when their spicy chicken is taken away, and that was also the case with the Wild Mountain Chicken Sandwich. Even though Wendy's launched a new limited-time offering with their Sriracha Chicken Sandwich, it was a poor substitute for many Wild Mountain Chicken fans. Despite a Facebook group demanding its return, Wendy's has given no indication the Wild Mountain Chicken Sandwich will ever be coming back. Earlier in the film, Hulk is beaten up by Thanos and quickly withdraws, leaving Banner to run the show for a bit. Wendy's does still have the original spicy chicken sandwich though, so it may be time to learn to make your own wild mountain sauce to go on top. Throughout the rest of the movie, Hulk refuses to return, Sika being used as a wild card to bail the Avengers, and especially Bruce, out of their endless problems. This leaves Banner to try to do his level best to help on his own. Throughout the planning and brainstorming that follows, he does just that, but when Thanos' forces arrive outside of Wakanda and everyone rushes to the defense, Banner finds himself looking for a way to make a bit of a splashier difference than simply using his thoughts and words. Without Hulk, his battlefield prowess is admittedly pretty lame, but he solves the problem by borrowing a suit of Iron Man armor. And it's not just any suit, it's the Hulkbuster suit. This behemoth bit of hardware is built to take on Banner's alter ego, and as such, it gives the scientist a thunderous effect on the battlefield, that is, until Thanos arrives and literally tosses him into a cliff. Yeah, we're counting Morgan Stark throughout Tony Stark's journey, one of the few things that eludes him is the comfort and security of a family. And then, presto, he gets a family just when everyone else in existence loses theirs. In the five years that pass after the snappening wipes out half of the universe, Tony marries Pepper Potts, and they have a daughter, Morgan H. Stark. While Morgan's future in the MCU remains to be seen, in her brief spell on the silver screen during Avengers, Endgame, she manages to become one of the few MCU personalities who actually gets to wear a bit of the Iron Man armor. The first time we meet Morgan, Tony wanders out to her play tent, calling his daughter for lunch. Once there, Morgan confronts him, ordering him to, define, lunch, or be disintegrated. As she does so, she emerges from the tent, wearing none other than the unfinished rescue armor helmet. Tony removes it lovingly, telling her that she shouldn't be wearing it since it's part of a special anniversary gift he's making for her mom. Nevertheless, the quick glimpse of Morgan in the helmet officially ticks the box of, wearing Iron Man armor, gaining her a spot on the list. The question is, is that the last time she puts on her father's tech, or is there more in store for the young Miss Stark down the road? Professor Hulk uses Tony's tech to save the world before we get too far into this one, let's make one thing clear. The Hulk doesn't need Iron Man armor. Stark and Banner's tussle in Johannesburg during Avengers, Age of Ultron is enough to show that. However, it doesn't change the fact that the Banner-Hulk hybrid known as Professor Hulk actually does end up wearing a bit of Tony Stark's armor during Avengers, Endgame. He doesn't do this for protection or safety, though. On the contrary, the entire ordeal leaves his arm fried to a crisp. Nevertheless, as Endgame moves into its third act and the heroes return through time bearing the six Infinity Stones, Professor Hulk offers his gamma radiation-filled body as sacrifice to undo the snap from five years earlier. He puts on Stark's Infinity Gauntlet, which is built out of Stark's Iron Man tech, we might add, and reverses the snap, just before Thanos ambushes the compound. It's not a whole suit, nor does he wear it for a long time, 
but the brief, second snap, is enough to qualify Professor Hulk as yet another hero to wear the Iron Man armor. Thanos dies wearing Iron Man armor when most people think, Iron Man armor, they don't automatically think, genocidal warlord, but here, we have the Mad Titan himself. As Avengers, Endgame draws to a close, Thanos brings his entire 2014 army through the time machine, right into upstate New York in the year of our Lord 2023. Upon his arrival, he blasts the Avengers HQ to Kingdom Come and descends like a cloud to take on the heroes and capture their Stark-powered Infinity Gauntlet knockoff for himself. As the situation develops, he even declares that this time, rather than eliminating half of all living things, he'll just wipe everything out and start over. At the most dangerous point in the entire battle, Thanos gets his hands on Stark's gauntlet and puts it on, only being stopped from snapping his metal-clad fingers by the timely arrival of Captain Marvel. After that, Stark nabs the Infinity Stones and uses his own suit to snap the Mad Titan's army into dust. Much like Professor Hulk, Thanos' brief stint wearing the tech allows him to just squeak into the mix as one of the few characters who've had the opportunity to wear Stark's Iron Man tech in one way or another.